All praises, all praises to the Most High. Welcome back to the channel. I am the Ferratist and welcome to Kush Culture. Today, I hope you guys had a great week. It's the weekend and I'm hoping everything goes well for you this week. But I just want to do a quick video. Today, this video is going to be called Curse Be Canaan. It's coming out of Genesis chapter 9, verse 25. Let's get it.
okay guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to the channel i really appreciate you guys stopping by on a friday um today is going to be uh it's going to be a pretty good video it's not going to be long but i think it's going to be strong and i want to uh talk about the curse of canaan okay so um we're going to start here genesis 9 Make sure I got everything working. Hold on a minute, please. Wanna make sure I got everything working the way it's supposed to be. Okay. I hope everybody's doing well today. Everybody's having a good weekend so far. Just started, so Friday comes by so quickly. Every time you look up, it's Friday again, so I don't know. All right, so let me go ahead and get into this. All right, we're going to start with Genesis chapter 9. Okay, we're talking about Curse Be Canaan. The reason why I wanted to talk about Curse Be Canaan is because when I did my last video, when I did the Moses and Akhenaten video, the, the three-part series, um, when you start researching, you, you, wind, you wind up coming up with more questions about some things. And, and as I was researching Moses and Akhenaten, um, some things just started coming to mind that I probably need to do some more videos on and once I get done with this one I already know what my next video is going to be based on the research I've done for this one so it's, it's just going to be an ongoing thing but at the end of the day I do want to say this my goal is to present an opportunity for you to learn you know we've been going through this for so many years everyone is telling us about Christianity I'm not saying you should be a Christian or you shouldn't be a Christian. You be whatever you need or want to be. God made us, create us as individuals. However, we choose where we want to go. We choose religion. We choose faith. We choose whatever it is we want to choose. But God created us individuals and we go the direction that we feel fit for us. However, when we came over here, we didn't have a choice. But now that people are waking up, we're becoming more aware of who we may be or or who we should be and we know who we are not but it took us a long time to get there so i want this channel again to be something different than what other people were talking about it's not a bs channel i got a lot of books i do a lot of reading i do a lot of research and do a lot of study and i'm going to use the bible to justify my curiosity the bible is what people seem to use to justify the things that they do so i figure i'm going to open up the windows of opportunity to justify and or explain and or come to a conclusion and maybe you can come to the same conclusion also but at the end of the day I want you to, to think this this these videos are gonna prompt thought okay it's gonna prompt thought and hopefully we can come to the, the same conclusion however I do want to say this now my research I use the Bible, I use common sense, and I come up with a conclusion, okay? So, to me, I find as people become more and more awake and more aware, things become more apparent. And as things become more apparent, that's when all the question marks come up. So, one of the questions I have here, and then at the end of this video, you might have another question, and, and, and if we're on the same page, we're probably going to conclude the same thing. And it's going to prompt me to do another video on the conclusion I'm going to draw today. So let's get into the video real quick. I hope everything is going well. I hope you guys are having a great day. And by the time you see this video, it's 11.14. I'm doing a video because I got to head out to work tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And um, you guys are probably not even watching this now. I don't even have that many subscribers, but I'm going to do my video as if I have a million subscribers. Because at the end of the day, I have people come back later on on my videos and they and they look at my videos and send me emails and stuff like that. Sometimes they don't even respond, but I get a lot of emails. The good thing is I had one video um, comment that they emailed me and they told me I did a good job on one of my videos. And 
on my last video actually in the last video i came up with a lot of research and this individual told me how well i did on it and it made me feel good it didn't prompt this one because i by the time i found out about it i was like wow i was already into this video so um this is this is why we do it because if you get one person to come to, to some type of conclusion or you raise that question mark and they start wondering and start thinking and start researching for themselves then the mission is completed so let's get started so i'm going to read so today's topic is curse be canaan curse be canaan and everyone talks about the hebrews and the, the black people are from ham and god cursed them and they're that's why they're black and that's why their hair is nappy and kinky and all kind of stuff but let's just see if that's really true so I'm going to start reading here. It says, And Noah began to be a husband man, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and he was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his nakedness of his father, and told his two brothers throughout. And Shem and Jathan took a garment, and laid it upon their shoulders, and went backward, covering the nakedness of their father backward and they saw not the father's nakedness we turn this volume down a little bit and they saw his father's oh, where am I nakedness and Noah woke from his wine because he was Noah was drunk he just got off the boat with all them animals and his family probably driving him crazy and we finally got off onto dry land he probably got drunk and said you know I'm on dry land again all these animals are getting on my nerve my family and he got drunk and he got so drunk he passed out and, did, and he wasn't aware of he was naked but his brothers were and two of his brothers two of his sons i'm sorry two of his sons covered him up they didn't look at him but they covered him up but one did so let me continue and noah woke from his wine and knew what was okay when noah woke from his wine and knew that his younger son had done unto him and he said curse be canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother and he said blessed be the lord god of shem and canaan shall be his servant god shall enlarge japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of shem and canaan shall be his servant and it said noah lived after the flood 300 years 350 years and all the days of Noah were 950 years and then he died okay so the beginning is Noah was on the boat for six months. That's when the flood was supposed to have happened. He got off the boat, all the animals, his family, dry dry land, and I mean, just being gone and, you know, going through all kind of stuff, he got drunk. And so now we're gonna go through the curse based on his son looking at his father's shame when he was drunk. Okay. <clears throat> The reason why I chose to go to the research this way is I want to walk you all the way to the end. So now we look at the, the genealogy of Noah. We look at Shem on the top, we look at Japheth, and we see Ham. Okay, so the line of Shem, as you can see, goes all the way down here, all the way down to Terah, which Terah is Abraham's father. All right, and then you have Japheth and his family, and you have Ham and their family. Now, they Cushites. Uh, Miseram, Put, and Canaan. I'm a Christian because I'm from Nubia. So, there's, I got other maps maybe I think I had that you can see that how it's itemized or who's who. But so we're going to go ahead. So we're going to see. We got Ham and we got up here we have Shem. Okay, so when we go down to Shem, we got Tira and we have Abraham. And you're going to see Abraham had Keturah and you're going to have his other wife was Sarah. Well, his first wife was Sarah and then Keturah was one, uh, one of the other women that he had children with. And you can see Sarah, you're going to see Isaac and Jacob all the way down to the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? So I want to walk you all the way through that. And then you go again here, you see what you see Ham, and they're not highlighted whatsoever. They just a group of people that I guess not as important as Terah and Abraham because this is the line into, onto Christ and the line onto the 12 tribes of Israel. So we're going to go over to the next part and this is um genesis again chapter 11. in genesis chapter 11 we're going to talk about terry and terry took abraham his son and lot the son of haran his son's son 
Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth unto the Ur of the Chaldeas. They go into the land of Canaan, and they came out. They came unto Haran and dwelt there. Okay, so I'm gonna. Ha I have Abraham's journey here. As you can see, Abraham's journey to Egypt, and you, it's going to be Jacob's flight. This is, these are some of the um, the paths that were taken that, that at different times. This just happens to be the highlight of Abraham's journey when he started here in the land of Ur and wound up in Haran prior to and he camped his tent there as they said let me go back and see um, Genesis he said uh, he, he went from the forth from her the Ur of Chaldeas to go to the land of Canaan and he came to Haran and he dwelt there so we don't know how long he stayed there but he was there for quite some time before he came into the land of Canaan now this is an older map I have a, another one here but well, this is the oldest one and you can see how the names changed as time goes on. This is a, one of the older, older maps. And you can see Haran up here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. I don't know how to make it to light it up. But you can see Haran here. And, and he started down here in Chaldees. Down here at the bottom. I'm at the bottom right hand corner. This is where um, Abraham started out at with his family. And he went to Haran at the top here. Right before the Cyrus, this is Cyrus here, Cyrus here, and he wound up coming down where it says Syrah right now, and came on down, and, and he landed into to Canaan. Let me see if I have another map. Now you can see this is the Mediterranean Sea over here. This says Great Sea, but it's the Mediterranean Sea, and you have Egypt here, and you have Damascus, and you have Haran up here, and you can see where he started and wound up down here in the baskets into the land of Canaan. Okay, so when he gets to the land of Canaan, it says, And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, and his brother's son, and all their substance, and they gathered, and the souls, and that they had gotten in Haran. So they leave in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came, and Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plan of Moray, and the Canaanite was then in the land. <coughs> Let me open this up so you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham, unto Abram. He's already had his name changed, so he, now he's Abram. And the Lord appeared unto Abram. Now, I didn't read the whole thing. I'm just highlighting the areas that I thought is prominent, but you can always go back and read the whole story if you want to. If you don't, if you already know it, then that's great. If not, you can read the whole story that way you have a better understanding. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, "Unto thy seed I will give this. I will give this land, and there build he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him, and he removed thence unto the mountain in the east of Bethel and pitched his tent." having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Now he's in Canaan now. Now remember in the beginning, the Lord said, curse be Canaan. All right, so he said, curse be Canaan. And we got the, we got the line of of um, Canaan, which Canaan is down here. He's he's through the line of Ham, okay? And then Shem is Abraham, which is highlighted in red. So now we're talking about Canaan, and we have Abraham. And we now, Abraham is in the land of Canaan, and he's getting ready to pitch a tent and, and create a altar unto the Most High. Okay? So now he's going to create a, an altar unto the Most High. Now, the reason why I decided to do this video is because I couldn't understand... If God cursed Canaan in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning of Abraham, in the beginning, we're talking about Noah. We talk about Noah getting off the boat after the flood. It's the beginning of all time. It's the beginning of the um, Abraham of Abraham being the, the um, father of Judah. He said, curse be Canaan. Okay, so now we in Canaan, and guess what happened? So now Abraham is in Canaan. God already changed his name to Abram. So when Abraham arrived in Canaan, he was still unsure what it was that the Lord had promised. The Lord, I'm sorry, when Abraham arrived in Canaan, he was still unsure that it was a, the land that God promised to, promised to become his own. 
Yet Abraham was full with great joy upon setting foot on the land. He even noticed that a number of people were devoted to cultivating the land and making it richer. Thus he prayed that this land, even if only a portion of it, will soon become his own. Let me put this, open this up so I can see it too. It's late and I'm tired. It was not. It was right at the moment when God told Abraham that this land was his. When he began rejoicing and thanking the Lord for his blessing, overwhelming with happiness, Abraham decided to set, the, set an altar and show his reverence and gratitude to God. He also raised a few other altars in some places, including Hebron and Ai, with the hopes that these places of worship would bring good tidings to the people of each land. As Abraham lived in his new land, he was able to live in harmony with himself and the people around him. He continued to be become a blessing to others, and God continued to reward him for his great love and, and trust in his commands. Now, when you when you read that, it's so it's so wonderful. He's in this new land. Everyone is, is happy. He's there. Everyone's looking forward to cultivating the land. And he said he became a blessing, and he continued to become a blessing to others. And, and God continued to reward him for his great love and trust to his commands. And it says here, as as Abraham lived in this new land, he was able to live in harmony with himself and the people around him. Now I was wondering where the curse came in at. That number one, God said, "Curse be Canaan." Now here he is in the land of Canaan. I mean, everyone says that the Canaan he is Canaanites, and they live in the land of Canaan. And then you have the Israelites saying, "This is the, this is Gab, this is this is um, Judah's land," and everybody has their own designation. So now you have Abraham in the in Canaan, in Canaan, the place that's supposed to have been cursed. And he said he lived in harmony with himself and the people around him. And everyone's excited and they're overwhelmed and they're living in harmony. And they're also cultivating the land and getting prepared for whatever it is they God wants Abraham to do while he's there. And the land was able, the land was there for him to, to use. So, oh, so far so good, right? But I'm just wondering where the curse came in at because... At the end of the day, I don't see it yet. And here we're talking about uh, Genesis 21. This is when Isaac was born. Now, Isaac was born in Canaan. Genesis 21. Was this, what is this? Genesis 21, chapter 21, chapter 21, verse 21. And the Lord visited Sarah, and he and he had said, and and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time on which God had spoken unto him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, name was Isaac. Let me highlight this so you can see what I'm reading. His name was Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old and God had commanded him. And now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh and all who here will laugh with me. <laughs> she said, who would have said to Abraham and Sarah would nurse children for I have born him a son in his old age. Now you have Noah son Ham's grandson, which will be his son's son. Ab Let me see. Noah's son Ham, his son, his grandson, which is Canaan, to be cursed. Now, Abraham's there. He pitched his tent there. He's getting along with everybody there. Everyone's living, living in harmony, and God's blessing him there. And now they done had a son at 100 years old. Now, Isaac is born there. So you got Abraham, Isaac, and we're going to get on to Jacob. Okay, so here's a chronology of the births of Jacob's children and by Leah and their handmaid. So you can hear, you can see where Jacob was born, right? In Canaan. He lived in Canaan. Genesis 29, 30, 30 and, 30 and 24. The birth of Jacob's children were born in Canaan. Everybody was born in Canaan. I think I got a map here how long they've been there. They've been there over uh, 33 years. 
77 altogether, but um, Cain and Jacob was there for 33 years. And then Jacob moved to Egypt for 17 years, but they were in the land of Canaan. Now, why would God curse a place? And then everyone that's going to the line of, of, of Jacob and further into the line of Jesus Christ, they're all coming from a cursed, a, a cursed part of history. But everyone seems to be living in harmony. I don't understand why would the Lord say he's going to curse this place and then everyone that he needs to get to where they need to go is coming coming out of this place, coming out of Canaan. Even the tribes, the 12 tribes coming out of Canaan. As you can see in Genesis 29, 31, in Genesis 30, 24. And if you look at the chronology here, you can see all the ages and what, what age they were, the famine, all in the land of Canaan. Now we are Genesis chapter 45. We're going to go up here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And this is um Okay, this is this is this this is a I, I love this story here. This is about when Joseph Let me just say the story. And for those who don't know the story, you might want to read the story of Joseph. It's a great story. It's something that it's a moving, it's a moving story, especially when they find out his brother is still alive. Okay, I'm gonna read it. It says now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house saying Joseph's brothers have come. So it pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, do this. Load your animals in the park, go to the to, to Canaan, bring your father and your household and come to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded to do this. Take cars out of the land of Egypt and go go. Take the cars out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives. Bring your fathers and come. Also, do, do not be concerned about your goods, for the best of the land of Egypt is yours. The, then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them carts according to the command of Pharaoh, and he gave them provisions for the journey. He gave to all the to, he gave to all of them to each man changes of garments. But to Benjamin he gave three. He gave three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of garments. Now, now um, Benjamin is Joseph's brother. He's the youngest brother of Joseph from his father Jacob, who married Rachel. Rachel is the wife that he worked fourteen years for with his uncle Laden, because he loved Rachel. He wanted to marry Rachel, and Rachel had two children, Joseph. And Benjamin and when she had Benjamin she died so Benjamin was his only true brother even though he had other brothers with the wives of Leah the, the Jacob had another wife ca called Leah where she had I think eight more eight of the other boys from the tribe or maybe yeah I think she had eight and one daughter and but Benjamin was his sole brother from his mother same mother and same father basically and um he thought benjamin was dead and benjamin got the most because that's his, that's his brother so he's sending for his brother he gave his brother 300 pieces of silver and five chains of garments and he loves his brother and when he found out he was alive he was so excited and he sent to his father these things 10 donkeys loaded with goods to he sent to his father these things 10 donkeys loaded with the good things of egypt Ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and food for his father for the journey. So let me let you see this real quick. I'm going to try to get to this map. Let me see if I have a better map. I thought I had a better map. Let me see if I can find a better map. Okay, I, this might be one. See. Let me see if I can put it in. Uh, let me 
see. I'm trying to see. I thought I had this thing here. Jacob. Okay, yeah, so. Jacob. Flight. I'm looking for jo I'm looking for um Joseph. What I'm looking for is Joseph um journey to Canaan. Maybe I can get another map of that. And you can see why he had to send so many animals and grain because it's 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 not a it's i think it's 200 miles it's it's not a let me see here here it is he had to go back to canaan to get joseph's brother travel from hebron to Zohar. yeah it's about 200 miles he went back up to um to canaan to get his brothers to bring him back down to egypt so that's why they had to have so many um what, what did they have? They sent with us follow these things, ten donkeys and and ten donkeys, ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, or food. Because it's going to take it's four hundred miles. It might take a, maybe a month or, or so to get up there and back. When they 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 walking, so it, I don't know how long it would take. I don't know the terrain, but I'm sure it's going to take a minute. So that's the reason why they made sure they had enough food and they had enough grain and everything they need to get up there and come all the way back. So he sent his brothers away. And they departed and he said to them, see that you do not come troubled along the way. Then when they went up out of Egypt, they came to the land of Canaan to Jacob, their father. And they said, they told him saying, Joseph is still alive. He is the governor of all in the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart stood still. Can you imagine? Now, now I don't, let me just tell you the story. I don't think I said it. <clears throat> For those who don't know the story, it's good for you to read this chapter and maybe the chapter before that so you have an idea of what really happened. But I'm going to summarize real quick. What happened was his Jacob is the father of of, uh, of Joseph in the 12 tribes. He's the father of the 12 tribes, all, the, all his sons. But Joseph is now the governor, considered the governor of all the land of Egypt, okay? But he thought his son was dead because those other brothers, his other 10 brothers, sold him into slavery. So when they sold him to slavery, they came back with the coat of many colors. And the coat of many colors is the coat that um, Jacob gave his son because that was his, I guess, his favorite son. But if you read, if you listen to the story about Jacob and Esau, Esau was the favorite son of Isaac and Jacob was the favorite son of 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 his mother so and now joseph is the favorite son of of joseph is the favorite son of jacob which he should have learned from what happened before and that's the reason why jacob and Esau was always at a battle but that's another story anyway so when um jacob found out his son was alive he was elated his 10 other sons which is joseph's brother sold him into slavery took his jacket because they were jealous of him they were jealous of him because um joseph has the ability to dream dreams and he told his brother the dream that he had and the dream that he had was he was going to rule over them and since those brothers were older than joseph they didn't see how that was going to be possible they were jealous of him then he said it wasn't going to have no way that's going to be done so they sold him for 30 shekels to and to slavery and and they went back home with the coat of many colors with blood on it so when they showed the coat to jacob which was his father they really jacob really believed his son was dead so he held on to benjamin who was the only son left by the wife he really loved which was rachel he held on to benjamin for dear life now this is the second part this story this highlight area is the second um journey well they, actually this is the last journey back to um canaan because the brothers went twice this is the last journey and now when he found out his brother is alive because the second the first two times they went they didn't know that was his brother they was getting ready to go through a famine and they didn't know that was his brother but joseph knew they were his brothers but they didn't know joseph was the brother that's another that's another video i'm going to do on that one too not only i'm going to do a video on that and on on joseph being in egypt 
and I'm also going to do another story on those 10 brothers selling his brother into slavery. Okay, I'm going to do another video on that, and I'm going to open up another door that is going to close some other doors. I'm going to open up this door. When I open up this door on this video, it's going to close all the other doors that people leave it, are leaving open, and it's going to seal it. <clears throat> I'm going to seal that door. I'm not going to say it today, but I'm going to probably in another two weeks I'm going to come back when I come back from where I'm a truck driver so when I get back I'm going to do another video and I'm going to close this door and I'm going to close another door about them people being in Egypt alright anyway so when when Joseph got sold into slavery the ten other boys which are part of the twelve tribes of Israel they went back home took the coat of many colors showed it to Jacob Jacob apparently was crying because they thought he thought his favorite son was dead because this brothers tricked him Jacob tricked his brother back when Esau was his brother Jacob tricked him his mother told him to do it and he did it he was a grown man so he should have known better but he did it anyway because he wanted to he wanted the um he wanted the um the blessing okay so now his brothers tricked him his sons tricked him the same way he tricked his brother so anyway so, um, Jacob thought his son was dead and now as you can see they came back and saying Joseph is still alive he's the governor of all the land of Egypt Jacob's heart stopped stood still why because he thought his son was dead according to his brothers according to his sons he told him that his brother was dead he got ate by wolves or whatever because they had blood on the on, uh, on the jacket and because he did not believe him Joseph it says Jacob's heart stood still because he did not believe them. But when he told them all the words which Joseph said unto them, then he saw the carts which Joseph had sent to carry him. And the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Then Israel said, Israel is Jacob. God changed his name to Israel. That's why it says, The spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Then it said, Then Israel said, And Israel is Jacob. Because God changed his name. It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go see him before I die. Isn't that amazing? When you read this whole story, it's so amazing. And I'm telling you, and then it's just a it's just a, a real, real, real nice story. Too bad to per well, I'm not gonna go into the details, but it's a good story, especially if you want to believe what's going on in the Bible. It's a good story. For for the future, even for today. It's a it's a real nice story. But anyway, so now um, they're in the land of Canaan right now, where, where I showed you on this map. They're still in the land of Canaan, and they've been there for years. Where is the map at? You can see they've been in there for, for years, for 33 years, and now he's on his way to Egypt, and he's going to live there for 17 years. Okay? He's going to live there for 17 years. <laughs> so the question is, Why did God curse Canaan? Why did why did the most high? Why does the Bible say that God cursed Canaan and everyone lives in Canaan? Everybody who's prominent in the Bible who who has anything to do with anything or anyone in the Bible, it all starts there in Canaan. Now, why would God curse Canaan and everyone's there? Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes come out of Canaan. And then what did Abraham say when he was in the land of Canaan? Let me see if I can go back and find it. And, and let, me, let me read this whole thing again. Upon reaching Canaan, when Abraham arrived in Canaan, he was still unsure that it was a land that God promised to become his own. Yet Abraham was filled with joy upon setting foot into the land. He even noticed that a number of his people were devoted to cultivating the land and making it richer. Thus he prayed that this land, even if it was a portion of it, would soon be his own. It was right at the moment when God told Abraham that this is a land he will this is the land that this land was his 
when he began rejoicing and thanking God for this blessing. Overwhelmed with happiness, Abraham decided to set an altar to show his reverence and gratitude to God. He also raised a few other altars at some, in some places including here Hebron and Ai, with the hopes that these places of worship would bring good tidings to the people of each land. As Abraham lived in his new land, he was able to live in harmony with himself and the people around him. He continued to become a blessing to others, and God continued to reward him for his great love and trust in his commands. That's a great story. And I want to I want to show you one more picture that's going to make you um, think. I'm sorry about that. Other. Now this is the Israel's exodus from Egypt to the promised land. And guess where the promised land is? It's in Canaan. The promised land is in Canaan. Curse be Canaan. Right? Curse be Canaan. And here you got the Exodus from Egypt into the land of Canaan. So you have to ask yourself was Canaan really cursed? And if so, by who? Is the story true that God cursed Canaan? Yet the 12 tribes of Israel came from Canaan. The promised land is in Canaan. Noah, son Ham, grandson named Canaan was supposed to have been cursed. The Canaanites were supposed to have been cursed. But Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all in the promised land are all in Canaan. No way they do that at. If you have any questions or doubt about this video, please drop a comment down below. Maybe put our two heads together and come up with a conclusion. But as you can see, if the promised land is in Canaan, the same land that's supposed to be cursed. Makes you wonder. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for it. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for stopping by. Please like and share. Leave a comment, leave an email, and we'll get back to you. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to get to get back to me. I don't mind answering as, as much as I can. Now I do work and um, I may not better get to your um, your uh, comment on time, but I will respond. And I appreciate you stopping by. Enjoy your weekend. All praises. <laughs>